Ah, you guys. Welcome to another Glitter and Garbage. I'm Justine Marino, joined today by one of my oldest and dearest friends in comedy. We started together. We definitely did. We definitely did back in like 08 ish. I will always have a memory of a young Justine Marino carrying stacks of giant Tupperware cupcakes. Oh, thank you so much. Is that much. okay to bring up? That's okay to bring up. A lot of people bring up. Oh, it's a very. A lot of people bring it up. But a lot, it's a very specific era of Justine, yeah. by the way. So, like, a very specific dear group of people bring it up. But I also think it, it represents the, that your inner young instinct is this very sweet oh, person thank you so that's why much I, bring it up. I lost her i stopped making cupcakes and she went out the you're trash. still very sweet thank nice. you so much no one hates you that's true no one hates me we're a hateable bunch we no are one hates you. we really are i don't think anyone really hates you mm. really yeah i don't think so I could, I could dig a few up well okay great well you guys <laughs> do you hate him let me know he's the co-creator and co-star of alone together on freeform and hulu and hulu and you can stream it right can oh, yeah. you, you can oh stream. my god and it's such a funny show you guys i love it so much he's written on roasts he's hilarious he's helped me with roast jokes before he's vicious when I did Roast Battle. Remember, we oh. met at Hugo's. Oh, right. Yes, that was yes, nice. yes. I think I gave you a hoodie. You did give me a hoodie. I think I gave you and Simbari a hoodie. When like, we were, he blacked, when I was blacked out, he gave me a hoodie, you guys. Like, this is a true oh, right. friend. right, I remember that night. Yes, that was a fun, we just bar hopped for no reason. It's Benji Aflalo, you guys. <laughs> also, he's the host of his new podcast, Fat Benji. It me. What a fun name you know yeah well when you name your podcast fat benji everyone forgets how short hairy and annoying you are <laughs> so i lead with fat and also i'm getting fatter all i used to be skinnier when i was on tv yeah so now it's either if anyone sees me and they're like oh he got fatter it's like yeah it's called fat benji read the title idiot yeah it's like part of the thing or if they're fatter than me then they're like you're not so fat and i'm like i guess so. i guess not i know look you and i have both had fluctuations right we both like to snack <laughs> i think you're beating me <laughs> in the long haul like they say it's a, a but, journey not a race or a marathon sure, not a race and the marathon of fatness you won thank you so much <laughs> thank you thank you but early on you know the machine she like back when you gave me the hoodie i was probably about we were probably i was probably bigger than you then you know maybe i was that was tv benji tv benji but it's all in our heads the truth is is that neither of us were really ever that well, neither of us were ever fat it's just what we were fed like in middle school and high school like i look back at high school pictures of me where people did one girl called me a fat slut once which hilarious burn you know she left me a voicemail and called me a fat slut but it was the 90s she met phat exactly totally totally she did but like looking back i'm like at my biggest i was still not that big you know what i mean I think what's making it actually relatively easy for me to get fat, despite how much I feared it my whole life, is that when I was very skinny, I felt as fat or fatter than I do right now that I'm fatter. So now, because I still go to the gym every day, yeah. like I'm not feeling like I just ate a Philly cheesesteak in my car. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm working out. And so I do things to still feel good. Sure. And so, yes, I'm fatter, but I beat myself so I beat myself up so much when I was younger yeah. that I'm kind of okay with it. Totally. And also, I think we're in an era where it's like cool to be whatever size now. Oh, you know? yeah. We're Gen Z, all the girls have armpit hair and exactly. they're sloppy, like no makeup, no hair brushing. <laughs> They're not Italian mob queens like you, Justine. Thank you so much for knowing my brand. God, I love you. Also, yeah. I am as short and hairy as you, for sure. I'm part Italian. I did. Oh, I know. We talked about this. Because I, yeah. I never knew that. I always knew, you know, obviously, I know you're Jewish. A lot of people assume I'm Jewish. Uh, but East Coast Italian, which my family is, it's like same thing. Same neighborhood. Same neighborhood. Um, let's talk about your outfit, though, real quick. You mentioned a little bit. You ate a Philly cheesecake. Uh, che cheesecake. <laughs> I ate both. I have a cheesesteak and I follow it up with a cheesecake. I, I have gold belly. Send them to me both from Philadelphia and I'll be honest, it's been quite dark. No, just I, I had a half a cheesesteak in my car okay. on the ride over here. Because What's funny is I was running a few late and then I realized I needed gas and you were like, all good. By the way, I ate a Philly cheesesteak in my car and now I have it all over my shirt. So feel free not, not to post in 4K. Then we I pull up and you're like, I'm a little later because I stopped to buy new clothes. 
Well, first I was rushing and eating a cheesesteak, and the cheesesteak took too long because it's from this place called Matu. You may have seen it on Instagram. It's mm -hmm. like the best cheesesteak in LA, apparently. Yeah. And I work close to there, so I've been meaning to go, meaning to go. I go, the bread oven's messed up, so now I'm running late, and now I'm eating the cheesesteak. It's too hard to eat. Anyways, I am then disgusting. I have grease all over <laughs> me. I look and feel like you have the, the feeling of having just eaten a cheesesteak, but then it's on me, and I'm right. just like, this is so gross, and I'm gonna, I was supposed to be or 230 it was like 232 on the nav right and then you're like i'm 237 oh great so then i'm just like i'll, f I'll find a ross yeah <laughs> i'll find a marshall's but all burp i don't think burbank allows big stores like oh interesting i think they have like a costco and a walmart on the outskirts right. but while you're driving through it it's just it's just like cute little businesses or mechanics and gun stores that's true <laughs> So I'm just like, God damn it, gun store, tactical store, mechanic, mechanic, mechanic. Where is, I almost stopped in a weed store and I was like, I'll just get a 311 t-shirt. Oh my like, God. No big deal. And then as I'm rounding the corner, I'm just like, you're going to just go in there all disgusting. I see like one of those Dickies stores, yes. which are still pretty mom and pops. Yes. And it was it was popping in there. They had Dodgers stuff, baseball stuff, Lakers stuff, Dickies, Levi's. Like had I had more time, yeah. I would have gotten maybe cooler gear. <laughs> But I got the Otani t-shirt. Otani's a Dodger, for those of you who don't know. He's yes. got $700 million, biggest, one of the biggest athletes in the world. Yeah. So I was like, this is at least kind of funny. And then I just grabbed these. I wanted, I was like, I'll grab Dickies. But then all of a sudden, I, they had like walls of Dickies. Also, can I just talk about, pun intended, the ballsiness of buying gray sweatpants to come on a podcast? Because gray sweatpants, a lot of guys shy away, you know? Because it, it's like a sexual thing? Well, because you could see dick through it. That's a common thing. Well, I live. In, I've been living in West Hollywood for way too long that I'm like, gray sweatpants, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you got to move to Encino. I was not having those thoughts, Justine. Um, That's the first thing I thought. Well, I didn't peek though. I was respectful. Thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. I don't know what's going on in terms of my bulge right now, but um, I was in a I was in a panic. I was like, "You're a pig. You're eating cheesesteaks <laughs> in the car. Justine's waiting on you. Time is money. There's an engineer there. You pig. Just grab whatever." So, I, I, like I said, originally I wanted Dickies because it's been a while since I used to wear them, and I was like, "I'll bring those back." Yeah. Um, but then I just grabbed these because I just was like. I knew they'd fit because it's just like a large pair of sweatpants. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a large in 5'6". No, I love it. God, I love you. You look great, by the way. Thank you. You look Thank great. You. This Thank is a good you. fit. You look cool. You know, Thanks. You look like you could be like YG's producer in this, if I'm being honest. I mean, if I had more time to network in there. <laughs> but I, didn't, I don't know how to recognize rappers that are pre 2000 exactly i only know like the the ones of our generation like ludicrous yeah. i got that down got it you know juvenile i could spot a juvenile you know i think yeah juvenile i got juvenile what no no you lost him who's the other one who is the one that was on like the kevin hart show is that juvenile i don't know which kevin hart show remember kevin hart had like a 19 minute sitcom that was popular for a few years the real husbands of something oh i do remember was he on that i don't know i don't know this is a great show white people try to remember <laughs> rappers <laughs> i think that's the name of the episode. i could recognize del the funky homo sapien i got him no i could recognize some rappers yeah i could i mean those ones i could the ones now i'm like i don't know i feel like do you feel like rap's a little softer now like when we were in high school and stuff it was like party in the club now it's a little more like you know not enunciating quite as much the beat's not as hard you know it's not as dancey it's more like vibey i i i can see that well we definitely had gangster rap i think yeah. we did a good job with that yeah. and by we i mean you and me just <laughs> Um, and then there was like a moment where there was like cool underground, like intellectual rap. There yeah. was like the far side and hieroglyphics. Oh, yeah, totally. That was when I was really into it. I was like super into it. But then it kind of started becoming about like money and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't do that. I don't want to like, because I'm not like a nightclub person. Yeah. I'm not a flashy person, as you can tell. Yeah. But it's interesting because you are. You're, I was telling you on the way in, you're like, you were always the rich friend in our comic group. Because you, know? you guys were all so poor. <laughs> <laughs> Not rich. I'm from Beverly Hills and stuff, but like, I don't feel rich. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have a house though. You're doing something. No, right? I'm, I'm, I'm privileged for sure. Yeah, no, but, uh, but I just remember we would always give you shit because like you grew up in Beverly Hills. Did you go to Beverly Hills High? I did, yeah. You know what's so funny is uh, with 90210, 
and I talked to Ben Glebe about this because he went to Beverly Hills High too, is like living here now, it's hilarious to think that they were trying to convince us all that Beverly Hills was enough, or was big enough to have also a West Beverly High, like a regular Beverly. It's so tiny, you know? Yeah, West Beverly doesn't exist. Yeah, no, it's Was that not. a hard, when did you, how old were you when you learned that? You know, I think it was probably my first trip out here. <laughs> yeah, first trip when I was like in high school and um, yeah, it was disappointing. I was like, let's go by West Beverly. And my parents were like, we're so sorry to have to, it was like telling me Santa wasn't real, you know? Beverly itself is a pretty large school. So I wouldn't, I, I don't think it's, you think Out, it could happen? I don't think it's outlandish. Yeah. Are, is I, there another high school in Beverly? You know, no? I think they like reconfigured it. When I was a kid, there were four elementary middle school things, okay. like K through eight. And then there was one high school. But now I think it's different where there's like two elementary and a junior and, a, and then the high school. So I don't know exactly how it's broken down now. But my aunt was in the Beverly Hills City Council. Yeah, she and, was. Or the Beverly Hills School Board. I'm sorry. And right when she got there, she started kicking kids out who don't live in the district. Oh, my God. That would have been Andrea Zuckerman. Yes. And so I was not looked upon well by some people. Got it. Got it. But I support my Aunt Lisa. Yeah. You got to support Aunt Lisa. Aunt Lisa's a queen and she's tough and she does. Hey. She's just doing her job. I mean, we're paying taxes for who? Some so- some kid who lives in Culver City? Exactly. Sorry. Culver High ain't bad. Culver City's great. It's great. I'm sure they have a great high school there. They got a great high school, great mall. Great mall in the Culver City. Oh my God. Um, wait, going back to the Dodgers though, because mm-hmm. you're a Dodgers fan as well. We've run into each other at games. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've always been a Dodgers fan. Yes. I love the Dodgers. I really got into them during the pandemic when I watched on TV and saw how hot they are. I was mm-hmm. like living for it, mm-hmm. especially Joe Kelly. Is he hot? He's so hot. Okay. I thought Bellinger was considered the hot one. So Bellinger's hot, but there's just something about Joe. He's like, got this mullet and glasses and he's really tall. I mean, Belly was tall obviously too, but there's something like he throws balls at people and it's kind of a wild one. He's got like fuck you energy. Like he's like, yeah, he's got fuck you energy. Like if you're, if he's your husband, you're going to cheesecake factory and you're like, babe, please don't fight anyone at cheesecake factory again. Yeah. Cody Bellinger's like, I'm going to hit my bowl before we go into cheesecake. factory. Exactly. Like he's too focused on the game. Like Mm -hmm. that's why I'm like, You know, Joe Kelly, intuitively, is he everyone's favorite? He's like a relief pitcher. It's not like he's like the star, you know, but he's got that bad boy energy. And, you know, he fucks, you know. Yeah. He's an L.A. local, too. Yeah. He's isn't he from like Rancho Cucamonga? I think so. Yeah. Rancho Cucamonga. So I'm so glad he's back. I was truly heartbroken the season we lost him to the White Sox. Um, but I'm like, everyone's excited about Otani. I'm just so glad we got Joe Kelly back. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Kelly's cool. Did you see the video with Joe Kelly's wife? and Yes. Otani they, bought them a Porsche? Yes. They seem like the coolest couple. And the it wasn't the time I saw you at the game, but I went with Mitch last season to a game. Oh, it was his bobblehead night. Did you go to that? The Mariachi Joe Kelly Joe bobblehead? bobblehead? No, night? but that sounds like a fun bobblehead It was have. a really fun one. It was. It's a really good bobblehead. He's wearing like the little jacket. It was so cute. But, um, you know, during the last, uh, during the eighth inning, we go down like by the bullpen and Mitch is like, well, let's just go see if he's, you know, maybe he'll be warming up if he's going to play, whatever. He didn't end up playing, but we're sitting there and I'm really stoned and we're just standing kind of looking over watching the game from there. And all of a sudden this blonde woman comes and is standing like right in front of me. And I, because I'm an IG stalker, know that it's Joe Kelly's wife. I'm like, oh my God, that's Joe Kelly's wife. I start freaking out. And then her friend like tries to get someone down in the bullpen is like, can you grab him and get him over here? She wants to talk to him. I know. So I'm like, oh my God. So Joe Kelly comes over and I'm right above him like standing over the bullpen right next to his wife. And we totally made eye contact because I was trying to um, (laughs) secretly film him and he totally caught me. (laughs) They're like trying to have a talk like, okay, so we have to take the car to just tires tomorrow. And I'm like, like, (laughs) (laughs) but it was so dreamy. But then I chickened out because he was doing a book signing or like a meet and greet the next day. And I was like, it will be too creepy if I show up at that too. So I I took a breather on that one, but I got, we made eye contact and I got him on, on film. I think you're right. And also, like, if the wife clocks you one day and then clocks you the next day. Exactly. Now Mrs. Kelly is against you. I don't want Mrs. Kelly against me. They're so cool. They dressed up as Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears in all denim for Halloween one year. Like, they're cool, you know? You want to hear a real L.A. Townie story? Yes. Oh, you're about to freak. Yes, tell me. I mentioned this to someone the other day. 
So a thing about Beverly High is, I was talking about this with a, um, a comic in a green room yesterday who grew up in LA. Mm-hmm. So like mostly it's like the hot girls in Beverly High. Yeah. They all have fake IDs. Mm-hmm. So when they're 16, 17, they're going to Hollywood nightclubs and stuff. So there's like sure. this culture of fake IDs and all this stuff. Of so course. like the, the, the hot girl I had a crush on in high school, like is like out partying with people. Yeah. So as you know, um, my siblings are tall and attractive and way cooler than me. <laughs> and so when, and so they're all like 18, 19 with their fake IDs doing like cool Hollywood stuff. Yeah. And so when I was 16, they snuck me into a nightclub. That's how cool they were. I probably looked 11. Oh my God. <laughs> and guess who was there? <gasps> Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears. Oh and my God! I always have it ingrained in my head. They were sitting like on the floor by the door, like on the gross pavement, like all cute. Like they must yes. have been like twenty one or something. So cute. Yeah, Mini Me was there too. Oh my God! I'll never forget that night. It was that, a, it was a nightclub called Vinyl. It used to be really cool. I remember Vinyl. Yeah. I totally went to Vinyl. Yeah. Because I came out here in two thousand five, and my first group of friends actually, uh, the Glitterati knows this, but. Jason Alexander, Britney's first husband that she married in Vegas for 55 hours, lived in my apartment building. Whoa. So I hung out with him. There was like a group of us. It was like him, his girlfriend I was really good friends with, um, this Abercrombie model, uh, a bunch of other people who were just like young, up and coming. I lived in this building called Archstone. Now it's called Ava, but it was like, it was kind of like the... Um, one right on Barham that like all the child stars live in. It was oh, like up and right. coming. The Oakwood, but they changed yeah, the name. Right, exactly. right, right. Exactly. So it was kind of like that where it's just like up and coming C and D listers live. Temporary you know? housing for people with dreams. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but I used to go to clubs with them and we saw, I remember Paris and Nikki at one at a Halloween party in the Hills. We used to go to vinyl. We went to, there was one called Basque. Did you ever go to Basque? I didn't go to nightclubs. I only went that time and then when like, now I'll go if like a celebrity sure. takes me with sure. him. <laughs> I'm not just going and waiting in lines. Willy and, nilly. Yeah, hanging out with like Persian incels trying to get laid. <laughs> I'm only going with famous people and I'm getting special treatment. I know, I'm such a bitch now. Like I would <laughs> never wait in a line. Ugh. Like literally never. Um. And yeah. again, nothing against Persians. I enjoyed, I, I'm from Beverly Hills. Yeah. I'm practically Persian. I, everyone thinks I'm Persian. Yeah. yeah. I'm Moroccan. People yeah. think I'm Persian. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I have Persian nephews. See? There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, I would never wait in a line ever. Like, I'm just a bitch. I'm not going to wait in I don't have time. I don't need to get into the club that bad. Biggest celebrity sighting of my life. Also a couple. Yes. This one is also impressive because yes. this this couple didn't last that long. Yes. I was a teenager. <gasps> Beverly Center Food Court. Okay. Kobe Bryant and Brandy while they were dating. So they must have been like 18 and 17 because they went to like prom together. Wow. So that was a huge sighting That's for That's a good one. Ooh, you know, I had a really good one at Jerry's Famous Deli. Okay, that was a hot spot. That was such a hot spot. I used to make dudes take me there on dates, and I would get this love you. disgusting Sunday. It was a pe- it was the Midnight Madness. It was a dessert <laughs> for like eight people, and I would get this on dates. I remember I went there once with a guy who's now kind of famous. I'll tell you off air, but he, I got the Midnight Madness, which is a slice of cake with like eight scoops of ice cream, whipped cream. It was like a mountain of a dessert, and he got like a Caesar salad, and I was. Um, totally just like a fucking little piggy and I loved it but I saw Justin Timberlake and Cameron Diaz there together when they were together hmm yeah I used to kind of do that when I was single I would like I thought I was like cool I'd be like hey do you like apple pie and whiskey (laughs) and I'd go to Jones on Santa Monica oh sure and that was kind of my move that's and then they're like whoa I guess I do like apple pie yeah this is like such what is so I appreciate the first date dessert right I think it's like it means you're fun and like why take things seriously I'm I'm, just eating dessert yeah I'm so cute I was like 21 I was like I'm just so cute I don't take care of myself you know (laughs) did I distract you from the Dodger talk where were we with Joe Kelly oh Joe Kelly just he's really hot I'm excited do you have any predictions do we do we think we're gonna do it this year I certainly hope so. You know, every year they don't win the World Series hurts, and every year it feels like it's going to hurt even more this mm-hmm. year if it doesn't happen, and this year again feels that way because of all the money they spent and they stuff. They spent so much money. And they just got so many ballers. It's just like baller alert. Like, it's a joke. Like, every... 
usually in like sports journalism, like the journalists will have to like be objective. Yeah. Even objective sports journalists will just be like, I hate the Dodgers. I yeah. hope they lose. It's like, aren't you supposed to like yeah. have like a non-bias and like the, everyone hates us because we're that good. They hate us. So please let us win. Like, yeah. please. I mean, I it, look, it's so heartbreaking because we crush the regular season. Yeah. And then choke after that. I hope that Otani's like, like awesomeness yeah. will be the the nucleus that pulls in everything. Yeah. Because like Mookie I love and obviously what, what a talent. Yeah. But like he's, he seems like he's very by the heart. Yeah. And then Freddie Freeman seems like he's got like a touch of the Asperger's. Yeah. Which is also very effective. Yeah. And maybe that isn't like the best for the playoffs but Otani seems like so focused like the way he struck out Mike yeah. Trout in the World Baseball Classic. Yeah. Like I'm hoping that people can sort of surround themselves around his like I'm not effing around energy yeah I mean also I hope he just levels everyone up because he's so fucking good you know yeah like just being around greatness like that and he's tall I, I heard isn't he like six four or something I like know all their stats <laughs> I do too can we cut together a montage of Justine going and he's tall <laughs> I just <clears throat> I'm sorry I'm getting choked up just thinking about a tall guy. Um, I just I've is all, your guy tall? He's tall. Mitch is tall. He's on the short. He's six feet. He's like a little over six feet. Okay. But he's a little on the shorter side for me. That's a little shorter for me. Most like my first boyfriend was six four. My second serious boyfriend was six three. So so like when you met me in in two thousand nine, <laughs> you're like, what a funny koala. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just like. No, it's every girl. You don't have to defend yourself. You know what? It, I, I think part of it is like my aunt, her husband, her first husband, my my uncle, but not through marriage. Like he was like six, four or six, five. And I was like, and he was very attractive. So I was like, this is hot guys. You know, they that's just how you tout. fish. They, exactly. Exactly. Totally. I have very attractive uh, <laughs> brothers-in-laws. Oh. Like, both my brother-in-laws look like models. Oh, really? Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Well, because you have hot sisters, you yeah. know? Yeah. I, um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm like, if you're tall, it, I don't really even care if you have a face. Like, you have long bones, and I want one in my body, you know? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Joe Kelly's wife, you hearing yeah. that? <laughs> Shots fired, Joe Kelly's She'll wife. She'll be at his next signing. <laughs> Next time there's a Joe Kelly event at the Kona Grill. <laughs> the Kona Grill. <laughs> oh my God, that's so sad. What's funny is the signing was like at some random place in Van Nuys. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> at 10 a.m. I was like, that's kind of early. Have you gone to his mural? Um, well, in at at the in the stadium. Doesn't he have one outside of there too, he or did, is that? He had one outside, but didn't they paint over it when he left? And uh, then they, I think they painted the new one in the stadium. Okay, All I right. think. I'm just a casual fan, you know. <laughs> it's heartbreaking though, because you get attached to these players, and then they can get traded at like a moment's notice. I think you can still sort of have an appreciation. Like for example, we talked about Cody Bellinger. Yeah. Like he's kind of always a Dodger and then that's just is what it is. Justin Turner, he left like still kind of a Dodger. Yeah. There's just certain elements of like, yeah, you're a Dodger, like go play on your other team. But yeah, totally. And I'm happy we extended Kike though. It's good to like I love Kike. Yeah, me too. And I love we have a lot of Dodger Red Sox like back and forth, which I was originally a Red Sox fan because my Mom's from Boston. I was born there. We lived there for the first few years of my life. So I I don't mind if they go to the Red Sox. It feels like family, you know? Yeah, they're, they're, there's a lot of trading that goes back. Yeah, forth. exactly. So, like, I'm cool with that. Question, since you're not single. Okay. How do you feel about, like, single girls who act like they really like sports and then it's very clear that they're just trying to... Oh, like, I mean, that's... Be the girl that... the Oh, uh, she likes like football, Like the cool too. girl? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's annoying. There used to be this account called, like... Dodger babes that I followed. Oh, they have asked me if they can repost my pictures before. Do you say yes? I always say yes, and then they don't. Dodger babes. Dodger babes, come on. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't lead a Dodger babe on. Exactly. They totally led me on. Oh, I'm sorry. It was pretty, dis maybe this will be the season, though. I think I unfollowed because I had to, like, I'm married now, so I don't follow too many, like, Right. I don't need that in my life. Well, they were just, like, it was just, like, cute. 
it was like cute popular girls who like wore jerseys and stuff. I I do wonder though how many of them actually like baseball. There was a vibe of that where it's like you don't really Yeah, it's like you're just doing it to get dick, girl, you know? Yeah. And there's also this thing that happens on Twitter or X or whatever <laughs> where they'll just be this like hot girl and she'll be like another great day to be a Dodger fan mm -hmm. and then it'll end up in my Dodger area full of like actual Dodger information <laughs> just a girl being like and it'll be like a, a template of a saying that girls just say that it'll just it's just like good morning to everyone except Dodger haters oh like and I'm just like I don't need you in my feed lady so funny live laugh love Dodgers yeah <laughs> That's yeah, I think there are a lot of Dodger posers. Look, here's the thing is like I'm up front. I like it because I think the dudes are hot. Like I'm superficial about it. You know, I got into it. Well, I was into Red Sox like when I was in college and stuff. And then um, when they won the World Series and then I got into Dodgers when they won. I think I also just like winning, you know, so like any team that I can get behind as a winner, I'm in, you know, very Italian. Yeah, you. exactly. I just want to win. <laughs> I like winning. I like guys that make me feel horny. I like doing my hair, feeling horny, winning. <laughs> That's me in a nutshell, baby. Okay. You're Tony Soprano. Yeah, exa I am Tony Soprano. <laughs> Poor Mitch if I'm Tony Soprano. You're Italian. You understand retaliation. I understand retaliation. Have you ever been caught cheating? Um, I cheated once, but I, it wasn't like, it was out of, um, sort of, feel, it was basically a girl I was dating and every time we broke up, she would like fuck a comic oh. and then like lie to me about it. And then we'd be like a month into dating and she'd be like, I fucked this guy. Oh. And it would like, br it like broke me. And it oh. happened like a couple times to the point where I was just like, I, if I honestly, out, I know this sounds ridiculous. I cheated on her out of love because oh. I was like, I think the only way for me to be in this relationship and have any self-esteem is if I'd like do this and then feel like we're even somehow. But Th that was, makes sense. A lot was, of people do that. It was flawed reasoning. And I don't I don't I think ultimately it wasn't the right thing to do. Yeah. Look, the new Ariana Grande album. I'm not sure if you've listened to it because a lot of people were like hey, she broke up a marriage, blah, blah, blah. There was all this, you know, all these rumors going around about this new guy she's with who was in Wicked with her because they were both married and then they were both divor getting divorced and then suddenly they were together. But on her new album, she talks about how she alludes to her husband was actually cheating first and then she cheated after. So I think, I mean, look, you and Ari, you're just human, you know? You just want to feel self-esteem. You just want to feel even. Well, that's why often when you hear people like, yeah, jump to conclusions with like people who cheat, I'm always just like, you don't know the whole story. Like, obviously, yes, there's some like pig dudes and pig women yeah. who like do terrible things, but I don't think it's always black and white. No, I think it's very rarely black and white, you know? Yeah, yeah I totally agree. I also think if you're gonna cheat, I think there's an extra level of rudeness in like, if you're a shit about it. Yeah. So like if you're, you're Italian, so you also understand cheating on your wife. <laughs> Like the Italian mob guys who cheat yeah. on their wife and are like quiet about it. It's one thing. But in all the Italian movies, it's like when everyone knows that he's fucking other women yeah. and all the girls in the salon know and he yeah. got her an apartment, he's yeah. buying her things and he's coming home at 4 a.m. every night. Then like that's like, oh, well, then you're like really destroying that woman. Yeah. But if like once a year you go get a hand job at an Asian massage parlor, like who gets hurt? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm just saying there's a huge, <laughs> not cheating is wrong, but there's a huge difference between those two things. I think so too. And I think like, again, with the Ari situation, because also I referenced this um, in my episode where I talked about the Ari, the new Ari album with Daniel Francesi, with the Britney thing, we thought forever that she cheated on Justin and broke it up because she fucked Wade Robson. And then we find out that actually he was cheating, Justin was cheating on her the whole same thing. Justin was cheating on her the whole relationship, which I had kind of heard rumors of that just being in Hollywood from like the early 2000s on. Um, but yeah, same thing. And I think she like did it one time and felt terrible, but wanted to feel like even in some way. So I think there's a lot of nuance and you never really know the full story. Um, but I love the theories. <laughs>
I really do. Real quick, just a quick aside. I saw Dune, which I know you haven't seen. Dune. Everyone's two. talking about it. Uh, so I could not have given a shit about Dune one. I fell asleep in the theater. I was like so stoned. I don't remember it. Mitch tried to explain it to me when we were going to see it last Sunday. I retained none of his explanation. We get in there. I got so fucking into it. I saw it twice this week. I was blown away. I loved it so much. And Timmy has such good hair, you know, and there's sand in it. And it's just like beachy. Okay, I'll see it. See it. And Zendaya looks great. She's like a badass, you know. Okay, I'll go to City Walk. Mm-hmm. There's a Dodger store at Promenade right now. Oh. Did you know that they opened one there? At the Prop. Well, there's one at City Walk, There's too. now one on 3rd Street Promenade. Oh. Sorry to bring it back to the Dodgers. Oh, my God. Well, it's always back to the Dodgers with you. I mean, the shirt. Hello. Um, there's one on the 3rd Street Promenade. Is it a pop-up or is it like a... It looked pretty established. The mainstay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good to know. Now you know if you ever go back to Westside Comedy Theater. I can grab some Otani shirts while I'm there. Justine, I went there last night and I... F- I, I don't want to put this on you, but I don't know if you ever feel this way. I'm starting to feel like the old guy in comedy. Yeah. And last night I went and like all the comics were just like in their like mid 20s. I know. And then at one point I'm sitting in the West Side Comedy Theater and I just go, I used to perform here 18 years ago. I know. And they're like, are you showing off? I'm like, no, I'm just so old. I like. I know. When people ask when they're like, how long have you been doing it? And I'm like. 15 years it's like, it sounds i'm like this is like sad you know yeah so but they're all very nice i just like there's an and they're like talking about stuff and i'm like what's what's limestone and they're like it's a comedy festival in oh, indiana yeah. and i'm like oh cool i know i'm so old that i was like i thought we were talking about like remodeling a bathroom oh my god <laughs> i was like i love talking about limestone my parents have limestone in their house they're like, it's a comedy festival. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, no, I totally feel like the old, the old. I'll just say that. Like, I, yeah, it's crazy. How did that happen? It felt like it happened overnight, you know? Does it though? I guess it's been a while. It's been a while. I know. It's been a while. Yeah. I mean, it's like first, like 30, early 30s, you're like, oh, I, I'm a little old, but like not that old. Now it's like. Because we're around, what, you're, are you 40? You're 40 now, right? I'm 40. I'm 30. I'm about to be 39. So it's like crazy. Like, I remember yeah. your 30th birthday party. Was that? Wait, 31st. Oh, 31st with Mickey and Minnie. Yeah. Mm-hmm, that was a good one. <laughs> there's a picture of us. Maybe I'll post it when I post this clip. But there's a picture of us putting cake into our mouth, like feeding ourselves cake, making direct, <laughs> intense eye contact. Because we're both fucking fatties. Um... All right, let's move on. I wanted to ask you, because one of your other many writing credits, you wrote on one of my favorite shows, Love Island. I did. USA and a little bit of Australia. Oh, I didn't know that. This last season of Love Island Australia is good. Really? And I'm like, I've worked on Love Island. I'm not like the big, like, you know. You're not the target demo. I not the say. target demo. Thank you. That's a good way to put it. But Love Island Australia, those Australians get the game. They're fun. They're raunchy. They're funny. That last season of Love Island Australia was good. I'm pretty sure it's on one of the streamers. Okay, great. I'll have to watch it. I got so sucked in. I only started watching it because of the soup and I had to cover it like one night. And then I was watching it every, I didn't realize it's on like every night. It's so crazy. It runs every night for what, like five, six weeks or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so everyone was like, yeah, just seeing like, you only really need to watch one episode a week. And I'm like, this is my job. I, I have to, what if something really great happens in one of the like B episodes, you know? So I got really into it. I got so obsessed. I love it. Cause it's just hot people and it's like, raunchy it's ridiculous it's campy it's not trying to be too serious at all and then on top of that we have these amazing narrators who have incredible joke writers like you and mike lawrence do it who are like two of the funniest joke writers in la writing just what the audience is thinking and just doing all these hilarious jokes i laugh out loud so much when i watch that show yeah, it's awesome. When I did it with uh, Matthew Hoffman, he's now my very good friend. Yeah, he's great. He's, he's super funny. He's like a host on TV and does all this stuff. I love Matthew. So he would help with a lot of the writing too. He's like a natural, funny guy. We so funny. I we laugh so much, me and that guy. I yeah. just constantly making each other laugh. And yeah, it was a really great experience. It kind of gave me another notch on the belt in terms of like I'd never really worked in that sort of reality 
area and, yeah. it, and it definitely gave me an appreciation for the the show but also like you said that show is out like every day yeah so i was just around some of the most hardest working people i've ever been around yeah. just insane hours um just people who never mess up ever and yeah. on top of everything so yeah it was just in terms of the people i got to work with both in terms of matthew and another really close friend i made matt lovekiss who's writ writes on like everything in australia and sure. stuff uh, it was just yeah a really great experience now what's the process like do, do they tape the day and then send it to you like as soon as they're done like because it's like what a day or two delayed by the time we see it it's pretty like almost in real time pretty much they're basically recording all day and all night yeah and then as so let's say there's an episode that starts in the morning and ends at night yeah as they're recording they're sort of starting to develop the acts and the structure yeah so then probably by like mi and then there's there's different levels so it'll be like I'm guessing because I'm not fully on the other side of it. I'm mostly sure. just helping with the voiceover. <clears throat> but let's say like around midnight, they're starting to submit acts. Yeah. But the acts are kind of rough. Yeah. So th there's a first round of editors who are sort of making the rough edits. Yeah. And then there's another r round of editors who get it a little tighter and start massaging the story in. And then another round. So basically around, let's say... 4 a.m. you yeah. get the first act that that's been polished because it's gone through different rounds of sure. producers giving notes and this and that and different editors and then by 4 30 the second act comes in so then let's say so then as your the acts are coming in you have to start writing the voiceover for these acts right and then so let's say we start getting the acts around 5 a.m. where they're writing and then around 10 30 a.m. hopefully we have most of it done mm -hmm. different seasons had different ways of doing it but then there'll be like a network screening and then the network will have notes. So sure. now you have to go back and change things. And sometimes they'll be like, we had to, we're going long on time. We had to cut this scene out. Now these four voiceovers don't make sense. Rewrite yeah. them or, oh, and we didn't like these voiceovers. Mm -hmm. So then you have to start doing all these changes and then they have to get it out to the TV satellite right. to make it out by like, I don't know, 2 PM that day, 4 PM, whatever the sure. the times are, they can kind of change it. It's big. It's basically roughly like that, but it's a machine and a yeah. huge crew and the the editing and the producers and ev the, everything about it is a crazy machine. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's again, it's just so funny. And I mean, Matthew Hoffman, I know everyone talks about UK. I've never really watched UK. I started with US, but I don't know. Matthew Hoffman really does. He's the reason I watch. I mean, those Caesars Palace ad reads were I mean, they're not really called ad reads in, in a we, TV show. Would they be called an ad read? I'm like I, in podcast land. I think but we the, just called them promos. The promo. Yes, that's yeah. what it's called in television. I'm like, you know, the ad reads on your podcast. Um, yeah, no, those promos, those Caesar Palace promos were so funny. Like, and that's what I'm like. He's making the fucking commercials that are like feel like a funny, fun part of this. Yeah, so the two guys I was working with, Matthew Hoffman and Matt Love, because first of all, they're both like super funny, amazing, amazing people with good hearts, and all, and they work hard no matter what, and they don't, they're not passive about anything or any line or any joke. They always want to like try to make things better. Mm -hmm. And then also that year we were doing those Caesars promos, the network always has notes and is yeah. always pushing us back. Like we don't get this or stop trying so hard or this joke's too long or like, cause we're a wacky bunch of dudes, you know? So mm -hmm. like we go for it. We don't know how not to. Yeah. And then also you really don't know what a network's gonna say they like or don't like. Right. And so when you try to play psychic, you you might just end up shooting yourself in the foot. So it's better to go for it yeah. and have them tell you to scale it back than it is to assume they don't want you of to course. be funny. So what was fun about the Caesars ads is the network wasn't giving us notes on them. Some random guy at Caesars was giving notes, but even they were just like, no, thank you for the ads, I guess. <laughs> so we did our first Caesars ad and then like there were no notes, no one said anything. We were like, let's push it a little farther. Yeah. And so every Caesars ad, we would just like go wackier and nuttier. And then and then everyone just thought it was extra funny because all the producers were just like, no one's giving you notes here. So just like have have at it, guys. So funny. And so I think the final Caesars ad, like we like wrote a song. Yes. And we like we were just like we had these two great audio guys there and we're just like, can you guys help us write a song? And like amazing. So, yeah, we just pushed it and pushed it with those Caesars ads because 
no one was stopping us. It was, I mean, and it worked. It was so good. It was like one of the highlights of the season, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, couple questions that I always ask everyone. What, what, what or who do you fanboy over? Obviously, Dodgers stuff. But anything else, like pop culture wise, music, movies, and it could be growing up or now. Um, I fanboy over quite a few things. Definitely baseball in general. Like I do love the Dodgers, but like I am a baseball fan. I play fantasy baseball. Mm-hmm. I'm in a bunch of fantasy baseball leagues. Yeah, you are. I'm in fantasy baseball um, listener leagues. Okay. <laughs> That's. I listen to so many fantasy baseball podcasts, and then so for the nerds, every fantasy baseball podcast will be like, hey, if any of you nerds, they don't call us that, like if anyone wants to be in our, our podcast league, so like I join podcast leagues, and I'm in leagues amongst other nerds. Recently, I my favorite fantasy baseball podcast is called Fantasy Baseball Today. It's like okay. the most popular one. Love it. They're great, they're nailing it. And they're so popular that they have two fantasy um, listener leagues, and in order to get in, you have to submit something creative. And so I did. I literally like wrote a song and yeah, sent them did. a song. You called up your audio guys at Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> no, I used, because one of the guys was like, I really like 90s rock. So if you do like a spoof on a 90s rock song, <gasps> I was like, oh my God, yeah. So I used the karaoke and I like wrote a Perfect. whole baseball song. Amazing. And then my, you want to hear what broke my heart? What? This might have been French. It's not friendship ending, but I was super upset. So I have this other nerd friend who listens to fantasy baseball today. And I was like, hey, here's the song I'm working on. It was Possum Kingdom by the Toadies. Okay. But I inserted all these baseball references sure. and stuff. And he's like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll send a song. And I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. I was like, the song I was thinking of maybe also doing was My Name is Jonas, but I was going to do this trade as bogus. Because oh. about tr- making yes, trades in sure. fantasy. He stole. No. no. He stole my Plagiarized? trade is bogus. He played. Wrote a shitty song. No. And sent it to them before I sent my song. And he was like, I told you I would. I'm like, I, I kid you not. It was like I was eight and someone ruined my birthday party. That's fucked up. It is fucked that up. That is fucked up. Yeah. So it, I, I was honestly like heartbroken for a little bit. Yeah. And then yesterday I was like, you know what, Benji? You sing your song and you send it in. Yeah. And I did that. Good for you. Thank you. Was it a comic who did it? No, just a townie friend. Just a civilian? A civilian. Fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I fanboy hard for fantasy baseball. I'm a ska head from high school. Yeah. Mostly nostalgic. I'm not like into new ska. Yeah. But I was in a ska documentary. Oh, you were? Because when I did Alone Together, I um, we had an episode about ska. Right. And then I got in with all these like ska Instagram influencer accounts. Oh my accounts. god! And then when this dude, the same dude who made the blockbuster documentary, oh yeah, really nice guy. Yeah, he was making um, a ska documentary, and and he reached out to them. He was like, the documentary is not funny enough. I need a comic. Do you know anyone? So then that's how I got in the ska documentary. So I'm really into like '90s ska music, um, '90s punk. I really love LA stuff. So like. I can like name LA baseball players. I can name LA bands. I'm really into LA. Yeah. Even though I'm sad that it feels like it's falling apart. Yeah. I like. Yeah, I guess yeah. Ska, punk, baseball. That's good. Comfy clothes. Comfy clothes. Gray sweatpants. Yeah. What are the other pop culture areas? Movies. Mm. Celebs. Are you not a Are you a movie guy or no? Sometimes I think I think my phone addiction is pulled me away oh really from my traditional media i love going to the movies like i'm an amc stubs a list member i don't want to brag but um i do have 25 dollars so that i can go see three movies a week every month um but i i love it it's my favorite thing i bought I, i go i golf oh good for you um i go do gun like tactical training sometimes oh that's cool yeah that's fun look at you yeah so you've got a lot of places you could stop on the way home for some I saw stuff. I actually have a credit at a gun store <laughs> so I could stop there and maybe get something I love um, it but yeah I don't guess that's not pop culture no guns. it's cool ska is ska it can be anything though I once had someone say lighting <laughs> they fangirled over lighting I like corporate restaurants there you go what's your favorite I'm into Wood Ranch, but that's not like national. Yeah. Kona Grill, which I mentioned. Yeah. I'm a big Kona Grill fan. Okay. I'm a big Hillstone fan, the Hillstone Hillstone Corporation. Oh, Hillstone's big. Hillstone's big in Denver. 
Right. There, if for those who don't know, that could be a Houston's. It could be an R&D kitchen. It can be a Bandera. Oh, we used to, oh God, Bandera back in the day. Now it, it's, now it's, um, it's, uh, Hillstone. But back in the day, I used to fuck up Bandera, man. Their milkshakes were so good. Bandera had milkshakes? Oh wait, no, I'm thinking of another place down the street. No, but Bandera had this dessert that I really loved. Which one? I forget what it was, but it was really, oh, it was a, was it like a brownie sundae? I think they had a really good that brownie right. sundae. Um, no, Hops. My Denver listeners, do you guys remember Hops in Cherry Creek North on St. Paul, right down the street from Bandera? There's a Hillstone in Aspen, too, but it's oh. called like the White Tavern or something yeah, like that. I forget so, what it's called. Though Actually, there's a Hillstone in Cherry Creek North, which is the neighborhood I grew up in, and then there, where Bandera was is now called the Cherry Creek Grill, but it's like the same thing, I think. Um, kind of a similar vibe, but Bandera back in the day, I used to fuck up. I went there on birthdays. Like I love Bandera. They, a lot of them closed. Yeah. The one in West LA closed and the one in Scottsdale closed, which I think was the original one. Oh, that's sad. But I think there's still one in Orange County. Well, that's good. Cause they were known for their beef ribs, but R&D Kitchen has beef ribs, but they're in a mustard barbecue sauce opposed to a red one, which oh. is fine. Okay. Okay. Someone knows their Bandera. Yeah. I think I'm also into like comedy. Yeah. I just sense. like, yeah, I like comedy. Who are your favorite comics? Right now? Yeah. I mean, all time I really like, like Louis C.K., yeah. Norm MacDonald. Yeah. I feel like Norm MacDonald got twice as famous after he died, and I was always a Norm MacDonald. You're, all, you're a Norm guy. I was always a Norm guy. Um, yeah, I like comedy. I like going on the road. Yeah. I like my Delta rewards card. I have a Delta Amex. Look at you. Is You're that pop culture? Adult. You like limestone. You like I like about limestone. limestone. <laughs> Delta Amex. I'm very domestic now. I, I have love a, it. You're I have married. a pool. Yeah. I have to have a gardener. I love your like, I'm not rich. And then you're like, I have, I own a home with a pool and a gardener in LA. <laughs> and I stopped because I spilled on myself to get new clothes. <laughs> I can't, I will show you. I felt so disgusting. No, I get it. Look, I also did something similar with that. My car, I needed to, my old Prius, I needed an, uh, I needed to get a smog check. And I didn't have a payment. It was totally paid off. And I went in for the smog check and it didn't pass. And they were like, oh, you have to fix this and this. And instead of fixing that and that, I just drove to Toyota and traded it in for a new car. I did something very similar with my Prius. Right? When I was younger, I was really stupid. Mm -hmm. And I used to keep my car parked mm -hmm. with the windows down and the car keys inside. What? Yeah, I was that much of a stoner idiot. What neighborhood? West Hollywood. No. <laughs> Street parking or I, in the I, I had my own parking in the back, so I was just like, I'm fine. And uh, idiot at your old place. Yeah, no. Where idiot. you gave me the sweatshirt. We yeah. Were you there? Yeah. 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 That place. Yeah. And uh, and so someone took. I think they must have been on drugs because I had like genius i'd like cash in the car too they didn't take the cash <laughs> he's like i'm not i'm not rich but i can afford to leave my car unlocked windows down keys in the ignition and just cash <laughs> so they That's grab insane benji <laughs> I, i'm not it's not me anymore this is 32 year old me i'm so smart now and so then uh they got my keys and tried to come in my house so my house alarm goes off oh so they steal my car keys and a pair of Nikes that were at my back door. Uh, not fancy ones. Yeah. And and I was like, I called the cops. They were like, we're not going to help you, <laughs> pretty much. They literally were like, if you want to fill out a police report, just do it yourself online. That's what I, they said. So I, I was, it was when I got the, the TV show. So I was like, you know what? My parents gave me this Prius. Like, I'm going to give it back to them. And I'm going to get my own car. Otherwise, this person's just going to come back here to steal my car. Yeah. So that that was how I... Got dealt, rid of my Prius. With that. <laughs> I got a, I got a new car. Good for you. And then when I got my first car without my parents' help, I cried at the Lexus dealership. Oh, that's so nice though. Yeah, it was at a good moment. At the Lexus dealership. <laughs> I remember my dad being like, I don't want your car back. Keep it. I don't want it. I don't want it. And then I gave it back to them. And then, and then he was like, you don't need to do this, blah, blah, blah. And then I got my own car and he's like, Feels good you got your own car, right? And I'm like, yeah, why'd you? Yeah, oh, you know? that's cute, though. Yeah, no, it, it does. Nice. I had my parents, my first car I had here was my parents' old Land Rover, mm -hmm. which, like, was hilarious pulling up to open mics in a Land Rover Discovery. Everyone's like, who is this bitch, you know? But um, then the next car I got was a Prius that I got myself, and then I just got another one, Prius Prime, so it can plug in. Um, 
But yeah, it's nice to do it yourself. It did feel good. I used to deliver for Swingers, mm -hmm. the diner, yeah. in my sister's Range Rover. Amazing. I delivered patty melts to Amazing. people in the Range Rover. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, okay, cool. Couple more questions and then we'll wrap up. Um, one thing I always ask everyone is Twizzlers versus Red Vines. Red Vines. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God, thank God. Because a lot of... I, Jeremiah and Avery said uh, Twizzlers. Yuck. Ben Glebe said Twizzlers, and I made him do a blind taste test on here, and he switched to Red Vines. Of course. If you go, look, I think my theory is like a lot of times Red Vines, if they're open, they can be stale. So I think a lot of people are thinking of stale. I'm talking fresh Red Vine. Fresh. Right out of the package. It's soft. It's so much more flavor flavorful. Twizzlers have no flavor. It's like plastic with like a weird, like if you had like, that strawberry hint water. Like that's the amount of flavor a Twizzler has. And I don't know if anyone's been to summer camp, you can use a red vine as a straw. There you go. They harden though once the liquid touches it, but it's still fun. Good to know, but it Using is still fun. Using licorice as a straw. Ooh, like a Sprite through a red vine? Yes, please. Um, okay, have you ever heard this phrase? Cum gutters. Yes. Thank God, wow. I used to have them. So Thank you. Okay, you guys. Benji. Google me. Really? Yeah, I used to have them. I, uh, I was I was jacked on TV. Yeah, you were. TV Benj. So check out Freeform. Goodbye, TV Benj. <laughs> yeah, if you want to see the Benji's cum gutters. Do you know, you are the first guy that I have asked this question to who has known what cum gutters were. I remember Caroline Goldfarb. Do you know her? She's on this podcast all the time. She's who said cum gutters. She taught me the word when we were on... Um, oh, okay. Then I don't know if it counts because she... But I've now... It was like nine years ago. That's true. But here's the thing is... so Okay, so she was on the podcast and she dropped that term. And I was like, I have not heard that since high school. I thought it was so funny. And then I said it casually on like another, to Ben Glebe the next episode. And he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, you don't know what cum gutters are? And then I said it on another podcast. No one knew, three people didn't know. Avery and Jeremiah didn't know. Like no one so far has known except you. And think that it all comes back to Caroline. I love Caroline. She's on this podcast a lot. She hasn't been on in a while because she's writing on her show right now, but she is a Glitterati favorite. That's awesome. She's great. She wrote on your show, right? Yeah, Caroline's like a gem of a person. She's the funniest person I've ever met. Like, she's so funny. I think she is one of the funniest humans. She makes me laugh so fucking hard. I'm obsessed. Um, okay, last thing. Are you a Scream fan at all? Oh no, you don't like movies. You hate no, movies. no. I mean, I don't. I I was once in high school. I know the Scream movies. You know them, right? Yeah. So do you know the? Uh, what, what was that? That's my Scream face. <laughs> Can you do that one more time? I was like, is Benji blowing someone? <laughs> That's the Scream face. Sorry, I took improv class. I can commit, Justine. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just made eye contact with me and went <laughs> <laughs> like this is what it looked like you were jacking someone off and at the same but now time, that you know what life. i meant <laughs> that was like when we made ate cake and made eye contact okay <laughs> um i am obsessed with scream everyone knows and i have to bring this up because it just broke um so nev campbell did not return for the last one, the sixth installment, and everyone was very mad because she felt what they offered her was not what she deserved, and she stood her ground. She was like the hottest brunette of the night. Like, who was a hotter brunette in the 90s? I'd say she was definitely, I'd say Jennifer Love Hewitt was like, could give her. She was mousy. You think? Hey, look, here's the thing. Nev was sexy. She had those sexy eyes. Nev was, Nev. Jennifer Love Hewitt was cute. Yeah, Nev. So I think Jennifer had this like banging voluptuous body. Nev had a stunning like statuesque face. I right. Think, right. Yeah. I feel like Jennifer Love Hewitt is cute. And like, I feel like Nev Campbell, you have attractive kids, boy or girl. Yeah. Jennifer Love Hewitt, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if she has good looking like, yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. She's, Nev Campbell's like objectively. I thought Nev. Jen, you're hot. Don't get me wrong. Jen's so hot. I love Jen. I had pictures of Jen like on my bathroom mirror uh, in in middle school. I loved. I, she was one of my top girls. But also Nev because I, I felt seen by both of them because I was a pale brunette, you know. Um, but I always really 
related to probably Nev a little more because I didn't have the rack that Jen had, you know. Tiffany Amber Thiessen, she's a big Oh, brunette. Tiffany, huge, yes. Who is Tom Cruise's wife again? Um, uh, Nicole Kidman? No, the, the brunette. Oh, Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes, that's a big 90s brunette. That was a brunette. big one too, yeah. They're, brunettes had a moment in the 90s. I'll be honest, I always thought Courtney Cox was prettier than Jennifer Aniston and everyone always thought about Jennifer and I was like, you, really guys? I have always made this argument, Courtney Cox, like features alone, has a... I think has prettier features, like classically beautiful features than Jennifer. Jennifer has beautiful skin, beautiful hair, beautiful style, but like face for face, it's, but it's just the- Again, these are all nines and tens. These are all just, gorgeous You're people. all nines and tens, girls. But I have always thought that was interesting because Jen was always kind of presented Rachel as the hot one and Courtney right. was kind of more like- Quirky, funny, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, was more they, look, a... they were all hot, let's be honest. Everyone on that show was hot. But... Yeah. I also think when I was 12, like, blonde to me meant, like, Jenny McCarthy. Yeah. So I didn't really understand. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. With that for blondes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Jen was that, like, kind of weird in between. Now we call it Brond, you know? Which is in between. No, she was. F oh, you mean now she is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, back but, then she was blonde. Blonde? Really? Jenny McCarthy's a blonde. Oh, oh no, yeah. Jenny. No, I'm talking about Rach uh, Jen Jennifer Aniston. Oh, right, right, right. Because right. she's kind of in between, right? Right, no, I wouldn't consider her Jen 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 Jennifer yeah, Aniston. But Jenny McCarthy, blonde. she's still a blonde. She's yeah. always been a platinum blonde. She was my favorite as a kid. Really? Yeah, Jennifer. Jen that's Jennifer my McCarthy. friend. That's my girl. Oh, really? Yeah, well, Hottest. she put me in that special. Oh, that's right. I remember yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah so I love cool. Jenny McCarthy. Oh, she's great. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I used to co-host her radio show a lot, her serious show, when I would go to New York. And one time after we wrapped, somehow we... We had like talked about her bush on like from the 90s and she just I'm getting a salad at one of the like salad building spots and it's packed lunchtime and she just texts me this like picture of her from the 90s just bush out and so I'm just like in line with a bunch of people and it's just like Jenny McCarthy's bush just Good for her. pops up. She's great. She's the funniest. She's been on this podcast before. There you go. I'll sniff the chair when I'm done. Sniff it. <laughs> it was Zoom, but you sniff, you know? Okay. Thanks. You take a sniff. Um, it's, just, it's just Scalar Brothers. I'm like... <laughs> I love you, Jenny. <laughs> Wait, what about Carmen Electra? Did she do it for you? I liked Carmen Electra. She was on Alone Together, too. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carmen Electra was was hot. Oh, yeah. Who? Yasmeen Bleeth. She was a big brunette. Yasmeen was a good one. Oh, you know what brunette I loved was What's-Her-Face. What's, how do you pronounce it? It's like Farooz Balk. Mm. The one from... Farooz Balk? Oh, my God. She was so hot. Real, someone just told me I looked like her on a video of mine, like... A, a week or two ago. I loved her. I've never gotten her before. I'm into like a, a slightly, like I like a, like a weird mouth a little bit. Interesting. Like a mouse mouth or an overbite Got or a it. lip thing going on. Love that. Or teeth that are coming. I like when girls can't close their lips. Well, we know why. Like when. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Your screen face. <laughs> no, because like some girls, like they just have like so much teeth going on that like they have to go like this. They have to like struggle to keep their mouth closed. Oh. Something about that, I'm like, I like that. Interesting. Yeah. Because they have so much teeth. Like when my wife puts her uh, mouth guard in, I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Inter yeah, that's like when I put my retainers in, it like, yeah, it bumps it up a notch, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, this was so fun, Ben. Thank <laughs> you for doing this. I'm looking, I think we got to everything. What can, what, where can people come see you? Where can they find you? I'll be in Dallas and Fort Worth at Hyenas next week, the 21st and 22nd. Don't know if this will be out by then. Okay, Probably it not. might be. And then um, I go to Austin to perform at the Mothership pretty often. It's super fun. Cool. And I'll be in Phoenix next month doing Don't Tell shows. Cool. And by next month, I mean April. I'm right. forgetting the dates, but it's in my bio on my Instagram at Benji Aflalo. And then, yeah, subscribe to my podcast. I need it, man. I just started. Leave nice comments and subscriptions and five stars. and Fat Benji, you guys. I think it's pretty good. good. And I don't have that much esteem, but I think everyone seems to like it. You're very funny. Thank you. Yeah. No, Benj is so funny, you guys. Obviously, he writes for everyone. Come on now. Um, you were so great. Thank you. And Benji obviously did Alone Together with Esther, who's been on the pod a couple times, so. Mm -hmm. Esther's the best. Esther's the best. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, Benj, love you so much. Would love, love to ya. have you back. Anytime. Um, and, and come do Fat Benji. I, 
please. I'm really, I say, I say a lot of crazy shit though. Cool. I'll bring red vines. Okay. You won't be scared by association. No. Okay. Ooh, that like intrigues me even more. Cause I feel like I get pretty nuts on there. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So now everyone's gonna see. This is good. This is good ad for your podcast. You're like, I get so crazy. Justine might not want to do it. I feel guilty even having. I had one comic come on, and then they were like, "Can I listen to it before you put it out?" And yeah. And then like I just like so now I'm like a little self conscious because I don't want anyone to get in trouble. But I say a lot of crazy stuff. Right. Yeah. I mean, look. I used to be really paranoid about putting stuff out, but I think, you know. We just got to do us, you know? That's what I think. And I think the old days are over of like getting in trouble because of something you said. I don't think that even like... Yeah, I I think it's gotten... Because I think it got like way out of hand for a minute where it was like anything. If you like breathed on a microphone, they were like canceled. But so I think we're coming back to where like you can make jokes and stuff. Like yeah. I've noticed at the clubs and stuff, people getting a little edgier, bringing back some words. (laughs) Getting loose. I'm still good with my words. Good, good, good. Yeah. But um, for the most part. Good. Well, you guys, listen to Fat Benji. Can't wait to be on and bring Red Vines. And uh, I will be in Boston April 3rd at Laugh Boston, 8 p.m. Mark Ellis is opening. It's going to be really fun. Um, and then May 8th, I'm going to be headlining the Downtown Comedy Works. So my Denver girlies and boys get down there it's gonna be good um haven't been to denver in a bit so i can't wait i'll see you there more dates being added all the time and we'll see you next time on glitter and garbage bye glitter and garbage.